Okay, everybody, we're at the top of the hour. Um, we're going to get started here on our first, no, what am I saying, our 87th virtual Thursday training uh, session. Um, that, that's our 87th, 13 to go, and we'll hit 100 here uh, this year. Uh, today's topic is best practices for training 3.0 reports. We're going to deep dive into all of the reports for the training module. I'll be your presenter today. My name is Tom Lewis. I am the Department of Defense and International Trainer for Emergency Reporting. I spent 22 years in the fire service here in southern Arizona and I've been using emergency reporting since 2004 and I've been a trainer since 2011 and I know many of you have joined my uh, previous Virtual Thursday sessions. I recognize a lot of names today so uh, welcome back to those of you that have been uh, frequent participants in our Virtual Thursday sessions. Um, we always like to talk briefly a little bit about training opportunities. Um, this is our last one from uh, 2015 at the Presidio of Monterey in California. Uh, we closed out the year with a really good uh, regional training conference there. Um, the Presidio of Monterey, Monterey were fantastic hosts. And we've got uh, four planned for this year, essentially in four corners of the country. Our first one's coming up in April in Leesburg, Florida on April 25th through the 27th. Um, if we don't already have it up on our Eventbrite site, um, you can register. Uh, you'll be soon. You'll be able to soon register for this event. I'm pretty sure it's up right now. Then later in the year in May, we've got um, one in Spokane, Washington, on May 23rd through the 25th. One in Holyoke, Massachusetts, on September 12th through the 14th. And then our fourth one of the year will be in Colorado Springs, Colorado, at Fort Carson, from October 10th through the 12th. And we had a really nice um, on-site there just for their department last year. Great facility. And uh, they are, they agreed to host one for, um, for any of our customers uh, in 2016 this year. So we're looking forward to all four of these uh, regional training conference events. So if you are, if you are anywhere near uh, one of these four events, uh, we'd love to see you. Uh, we have an opportunity to... Uh, to meet our trainers face-to-face, -face, interact with other um, emergency reporting customers and share some best practices and learn how to become an expert in the system. Um, as always, um, I'd like to mention if, if there's anybody new on the system that um, to get the latest, latest information about emergency reporting from your welcome page on the support button, it'll take you to our knowledge base site that also lists where news and announcements are. And those news and announcements um, will show you uh, registering for any virtual uh, Thursday training, the latest system updates. Um, it's a way to stay informed with what's going on with emergency reporting. And as many of you know, we update the system uh, just about every two weeks. You may discover some uh, new features as you're working in the system, but we announce and summarize uh, those features uh, once a month, and this is where you can find it. We've had 27 uh, new or upgraded customers since our last virtual Thursday on January 21st. So if you are, ha if you do happen to be one of those new or upgraded customers, thank you uh, for becoming part of the emergency reporting family. All of our existing customers and uh, participants of the virtual Thursday, thank you uh, for joining us again today. Um, always great to have you on board. Today's objectives. So what we're going to do uh, is a little bit different than some of our other uh, training uh, sessions where we kind of go through processes within the system. We're going to actually explore just about every training report in the system. I'm going to show you something I put together that kind of uh, summarizes and gives you uh, the rundown of each of our reports. And that way you can kind of look at it, explore and see which ones are going to best serve you and your department. Uh, we'll mention a couple of our training team favorites as well. Um, I would like to visit, too, uh, time permitting, a little bit of some training code examples because um, setting up your training module is key to being successful with this module and being able to, to extract reports. And like, like what I always teach is good stuff going into the system is going to give you good stuff coming out. And so part of that good stuff in is how well you've set up your training module, uh, the various tabs that are found in the settings uh, portion of that module. Uh, the ability to manage certifications, and I'll show you some reports that will help you with that. One of the feature requests we get a lot is the ability to automatically send out either a text or an email when certifications are coming up due. And a user defined parameter such as 90 days out, 120 days out. That is um, on our roadmap to, uh, to be developed at some point in the future. It's not here now, but we have some excellent reports 
that make it almost just as easy as sending out a text message or, or an email. So I want to show you those today. And then, of course, integrating standards within the, tra within the training module and how that functions within the system. So we've got a lot to cover. Um, and before we head over to um, de the demo account, just want to mention that if you are interested in having any kind of training from virtual to on-site to uh, questions about our regional training conference, uh, Nicole Beard, our training coordinator, is the go-to person. There's her contact information there, both email and phone numbers, and she's just fantastic. She'll help you out and be able to answer just about any question you have as far as uh, getting training scheduled and coordinated for your department. Okay, so with that, I'm going to jump into the system, and here we are in the training module. So, as promised, we're going to focus exclusively on reports today. So, give me just a second to clear out my second screen. So, I've got the other document I want to pull up here. And so, here in the training module, what I wanted to show everybody is that you, you're probably well aware that if you click on Home and go to Reports, and then taking the breadcrumbs out by clicking on training, you'll have a list of all the general training reports. Now, that's certainly a great way to access those reports. And then once you find reports that you like and you use frequently, you want to click on Add to Favorites. And then it'll be easy to find simply by clicking on the Favorites button here. The other way to get to the training reports, and the way I kind of prefer actually, is once you are in the training module, you click on the reports button that's found on the horizontal button bar here um, on the training uh, uh, mod within the training module, and you've got a list of all of those reports. But also included in this list are the actual report number. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to run through these reports, and I'm going to show you what they offer, the filters within each of those, and then you can kind of decide. Okay, which you maybe you I'm sure many of you are using some of these, and then maybe you'll discover one that you haven't been using that you'll find beneficial. And uh, before we do that, I do want to show you a summary of our top report requests. So this is uh, came, to, uh, came to me from Bob Burton, who's our training coordinator. And I've highlighted the ones in yellow. And if you look, and let me make it a little bit bigger for you so you can see it. So looking at it, we've got basically the top reports being used by our customers by the number that they've been uh, run. And I'm pretty sure this is run by the month. So this is a monthly summary. And so you, all the ones highlighted in yellow are related to the training module, the report number. So in this case, 1503, which is a great report, one of my favorites, uh, classes completed by personnel. Another one of my favorites, training hours and points. That's our, uh, and again, the title bar here is uh, number one. So this is essentially uh, the sixth most popular report. Uh, the ninth most popular training hours for personnel for date range. And then as we move down, you can see there's easily about 10 in our top 50 reports that are related to training. So I just wanted to show you that they are popular reports, uh, many of them. And then we're gonna deep dive into each one of them today and show you their functionality. Okay, first one. Um, and uh, those of you that have worked on our reports, um, a question I often get asked when we're training is, what do the numbers mean? Are they, is it clustered by the module? Is it clustered by you know, alphabetical uh, description. Simply put, the, the higher the number, the newer the report in the system. So you, a lot of our training reports, because they relate to the new training 3.0 module, those of you that have been longtime customers, we used to have a, an older module, we call it training two, and uh, we had reports specific for that module, but this was such a dramatic rewrite of the training module that we had to create new reports. And as you can see, nearly every report for this module is either in the 1500 or 1600 series. So that's letting me know that these are all relatively new reports. First one, 1637, certifications regardless of status by personnel for personnel for date range. You'll, you, you've discovered, I'm sure you have, that most of our reports, sometimes they can be a mouthful. Um, the key word that I want you to cue in on when you're searching for reports is the word for. When you see the word for, Think of it as your friend, it's a filter. Um, usually it's either a single pick or a multi-pick list that gives you more flexibility to get more granular and more detailed with that report. So by clicking into 1637, I am able to select either one person or a group of people. 
and say in this case I'm just going to pick a handful here to show you and one of the things you need to remember here is as much as I think we probably all would like you can't click just on that well now you can okay at one point we couldn't click just on the bar you had to click on the plus so that may have been an up update so that's good news so you click on the uh, the people that you want to add to the list and in this case you double click it and they'll be added to the list over here on the right and then you can remember that selection so if it's a shift b shift uh, by station by rank you can cluster those people so then in the future I'm going to call this virtual Thursday test I'm going to click OK and now in the future those same people will be grouped together and I don't have to go in and manually group them I simply click my selection it will automatically choose the people that are part of that group pick my date range so in this case we're just going to keep it simple and go with the year but you have the ability to go um, start and end date month quarter and year and you'll notice that the year stops at the most at the uh, um, the current year if you've scheduled classes for a future year and you want to be able to run that now not necessarily applicable here and well it is applicable here in this report if you want to check um, certifications that may be granted in the future or better yet when we get to the report that talks about ex expiration dates um, I'll show you that but if you need to go beyond the current year just use the date uh, picker here and it does not limit you to uh, to an end date so you can go into a higher date range if you need to here but for simplicity's sake I'm just going to run this certification report for 2015 as I run this report you'll notice that it's sorted by person it will pick any certifications that you've added into the system so spelling will count if you're adding things well if you're adding things manually and you're adding the same certification to different people otherwise it will appear as a different certification um, within the system in the event someone did a lowercase NFPA 1500 it would appear as a separate uh, certification here even though it's implying the main NFPA 1500 certification in this report the date that you pick the date that you pick here is uh, the, the date that the certification was granted okay not when it was created nor when it was nor when it expires it's looking for any certification regardless of status whether it's expired or not that was granted during 2015 so keep that in mind when you're using this report it's ideal for getting an overall summary of per uh, personnel certifications by granted date. So if you want to see all the certifications granted in 2015, this is your report, or for a particular month or quarter, um, or any other date range for that matter. But again, it's it's pulling from the granted date. Okay, next report. Code hours per training code per personnel. What this is going to give me is the number of training hours per code per person. I have a multi-picker for training codes, so just like my personnel, I can cluster different training codes. So if I just want to cluster fire-related training, officer-related training, EMS-related training, or even subsets uh, therein, I can do that. And this is pulling from the training codes tab of the, uh, the settings within the training module. So for example, let's just pick a few of these here and we can group them and again this can be for virtual Thursday test and I want to see I would want to see all code hours for these two codes per training code these two per personnel click OK and because we're in a demo account I'm going to go ahead and go with 2015 but I'm going to pick all codes just so we get some data here in this report as we run it here there we go okay so what this report what's nice about this report it also gives the class name I'm partial to seeing not just the class code or either the class category or the training code I also like to see the class name and this one actually gives us that and so you can see um, for the training code called a test one John Adams has attended uh, these classes with this training code with these many hours uh, for that code so he has a total of four and a half hours for the year 2015 for training code A test one. And then you can see the other personnel listed here as well.
This one does not have a multi-picker for people, so you will get all personnel for a specific training code or training codes. And as we go through this today, too, if there's if you're using a particular report, go ahead and um, put in the questions box. You know how you're how you're using some of these reports to to meet the expectations of your organization. Because I know we've got quite a few here, so I'd be curious to see how you're using them too. Count of classes by class category, a pretty simple report, but there's something you need to know about this one. As I run it, I can select, of course, pass fail or passed or passed only or failed only. Now, when we see this is by class category, so this is the first tab in the settings for training three. It's just what I call the big branches where there's just a few of them or you know maybe a dozen at the most, and they're your broad umbrella categories for all of your training. The class count here for is not the number of classes. It's, it's a little bit misleading, and so that's why I want to clarify it for you. It is actually the total number of participants in the class. So this tells me that for the administration class category, I had 307 students for a total of 650 hours. And this only counts completed classes, only completed classes. And of course, 1,239 students, of course, that's not how many people we have in our department. It's just how many students when you've added up this column and then the grand total, um, essentially man hours um, in, the, in your training classes. So 2,906 hours spent in training total. This is a good one. Uh, count of classes instructed by personnel by instructor type. Again, a multi-pick list for people. We're going to keep it to all personnel for the year 2015. And you can see that Ed, in this case, he was an assistant instructor for two classes, lead instructor for 13, and he spent that much time in, in the class itself, so about 29 hours. You can run these, of course, for just one individual and give them a nice customized report for the total hours of number of classes and hours they've taught. A summary report, kind of a high-level report here. All right, I'm going to pause for just a second and see if we've got any questions. Okay, so far so good. Excellent. Again, this one is a pretty high-level report. Um, at a glance, raw numbers. Okay, this one is a particularly good report, and this goes into one of our objectives today in talking about uh, certifications and expiration dates. So for this particular report, number 1639, current certifications by personnel for personnel for expiration date range. This is the go-to report when you want to see who's expiring for a particular time period. So in this case, I'm going to run 2015, all personnel. So what this is doing for me is any personnel that are expiring in 2015 will show up on this list. Now what's nice is I have a multi-pick list for all of my certifications. And as you can see in our demo account, we've got you know a lot of different certifications. So it behooves you to have a nice, when you're entering certifications, to have you know limited numbers of people entering it so you have nice consistency here. So in, in the event that you don't have fire attack in twice because one's uppercase and one's lowercase or if there's any kind of misspelling or someone decides, well, we've got fourth quarter with the number four, but down here we've got first quarter spelled out with just the, the letter Q. So these are pulling from any individual certification within the personnel uh, list in the administration module. So all certifications will be listed here and they will be listed alphabetically. I'm going to go with all. I'm going to create a report. And this will tell me everybody's certification that and spelling, we got to love that. Any certification that is expiring in 2015. So if you want to run it for the month, for the quarter, um, you can do it per person. You can group your shifts again because we have the multi pick list. This report, number 1639, is the go to report for expiration dates and, and being able to track those nearly as easily as automatic notifications. Um, while we're down at the bottom of, of this page, of the report page, the description and some of the current criteria that you'll find in any given report will be in the little text box down at the footer of the page. So it will summarize 
uh, the key details from that report. So if you're wondering the data that you're getting from the report, it's in most instances will be summarized here in the rectangle down in the footer. Also, not only will you say, okay, this is a favorite report, I'm going to add it to my favorites list like I'm doing right now. So it'll refresh, that little um, hyperlink will disappear, and now this report can be found in my favorites list right here. If you're good in remembering numbers, and I'm going to run this again for 2015, at the lower right corner of every one of our reports, is the doc ID number. This is what I've been referring to as the report number. It's going to be found in the lower right corner. So I know this is doc 1639 or report number 1639. Okay, moving on to our next one. So let me, uh, yeah, we'll get to that one later. I got an idea on something. Okay, so here, master list of training codes. This really what it's doing, it is summarizing all of your training codes. This is your third tab in settings. And so what we do here is it's breaking it down by class category and then the training, I'm sorry, training code category and then training codes. So this is very good for taking out into Excel if you want to share this with neighboring departments, new ER customers uh, that are in your, in your area, um, friends that you know that are using emergency reporting. Because Training 3.0 is a brand, relatively new module, it does not have any import capabilities like our occupancy module, our, our uh, hydrants module, and our maintenance, maintenance module. So what I've done is taken some best practices, copy and paste these into spreadsheets, and basically set up the tabs as different sheets in a workbook on an Excel spreadsheet, and then share it with other departments, and then they can copy and paste the codes and descriptions and create their own list of training codes. Uh, again, it's worked for a handful of departments, especially newer customers or customers that have uh, didn't have the time to uh, take advantage of our training to show you how to uh, efficiently set this part of the training module up. So this particular report, number 1505, could be helpful, especially if you're going to be not only wanting to see a summary of all of your training codes, but also to help another, another department build their list of training codes. And the reason I mention that is because I teach so many Department of Defense installations, um, that ability to have some consistency across the bases um, can be pretty helpful. Okay, 1619, percentage of classes failed, passed or failed by personnel, by class category. We have not only a multi-picker for class category, first tab, the, the big branch of the tree on, training, on, on the training module. We also have the ability to pick um, a multi-picker for personnel. Going to 2015 run this one and it's a real simple column in our presentation showing you classes passed classes failed and then the percent passed again a high level summary chief wants to know okay how many classes um, have group a as a a shift uh, taken how many have they passed how many have they failed and then the next question will be is well which ones do we need to do some remedial training on if they failed on it or do we need to go back and do more more work on and so again a high level presentation here ideal for a quick look at the pass-fail status. 1621, sign-in sheet by station, so you can select a particular station or all stations if you're having a class where all people are participating. And this is just one of those good reports to print out, have people sign, have the sign-in sheet when they walk into the classroom. Um, I've seen some departments where they'll take this out into Excel, I'm sorry, out to a PDF uh, editor on their tablet and people will sign it manually once they come into the classroom. So if you want to go completely paper-free, you can do that, and this is the report to do it. Two other reports I want to mention to you that also function very similarly. However, they're not tied directly to the training module. They're actually tied into the administration module. But I use these when I'm out teaching in, in a, in a, at an uh, on-site for a specific department. Report 1097, sign-in sheet with active personnel for division. So if I know I'm going to be just teaching administrative personnel, I can run this report, and it's essentially the same thing, but broken out by, div by division. And those divisions come from your administration module that you've built um, under the pick list there for division. And then, of course, assign personnel to a particular division. Other one is 1601. 1601, this is per shift. So we've got one for station. That's in the training reports. We have these two for division and shift that are found in the administration module. So I know if it's going to be an A-shift day for training, I can run that report and get the same 
sign-in sheet for shift. I think we've had some requests to move these over to the training module um, report, so it's possible these will pop up there eventually, but I just wanted you to be aware that you've got a couple options. So sign-in sheet with pick for station, that's the one we went over, that's in the training module. Then we've got the one for division and the one for shift as well. 1640. Again, another one of my favorites. This is really great, great if you have to report to ISO. The reason I say that is you've got classes pass failed, all personnel, or you could cluster by engineers because we know driver operator training is a subset of the training that's expected by ISO. You can run that for the year, and then you can pick one or multiple standards. And so you can see I built my list of standards. This is coming from this. Let me just open up in another tab so you can see exactly. This standards list that you're seeing over here on the left under parameters is coming directly from the training module settings right here. And what's really nice about this particular tab, standards, and let me go back because I know I clicked that fast. So training, then settings, and then the standards tab. What's great about this is that you add your standards and then all of these standards, any of these that you put to the class, so say we're doing live fire training, but it's also company training, you can apply both those standards to the class and it will count, say it's an eight hour class, you could essentially get eight hours credit for both, both of those standards. And this report gives you the ability to pull that very, very nicely for ISO. And it lays it out in a really great format. Training code category, the code itself, date it was completed, and the hours. And then, of course, you can do the math for ISO because they're looking for hours per student or per personnel, typically. Uh, but certainly, you could run it for an individual as well, or, or like I said, a cluster of individuals. But this one, I like it very much, 1640. It makes use of our standards uh, within the training module and gives you a great report, especially when it comes for ISO. Things like NFPA, I know our Air Force customers, they have different expectations for the different ranks. So a set of their standards are their tiers. So high-level officers, mid-level officers, um, engineers, firefighters, they're in a certain tier. So there could be a chief, there could be a captain and a firefighter all in the same class, but that tier doesn't apply to each one of them. That's fine. I can filter them in or out, those standards or those tiers, using my standards. Uh, within the training module. So this is the way to make use of it. I think it works very effectively and uh, can. And I'd like to know, I know we have some customers that have improved their ISO score um, from using our system. So I'd, I'd love to know if they've uh, been able to make use of this report uh, when ISO comes to town to grade them. All right, I'm gonna take a quick pause to see if anybody has any questions. We're almost at the midpoint of today's session. All right, so far so good. I hope this, um, these rundown of these reports are, are helpful to you. Um, you can see some of the capabilities because it is hard by just reading the name of the report to often know exactly what you're getting. Okay, 1626, training codes not completed by personnel for code for date range. All right, well, what this means is that any class that had a training code assigned to it, if the, your personnel did not take that class with that particular training code or did not take any class with those training codes um, that were offered, it will appear here. So all personnel, again, I'm going to go with all training codes for 2015. Um, I know we all know how to use the, the parameter selector here, so I'm going to keep it simple so that we can get some uh, some good data out of these, uh, these uh, reports in our demo account. So as I run this, you can see that John, for 2015, we had classes that contained these codes so code category, then the code. So I know that we had a, a code procedures for Chemtrek. He did not. He did not take that class. Also, the emergency drivers training. He did not take a class that contained that code. So it's a way to see gaps in your training based on code for each individual. Um, and again, I think this is one of the more popular reports too. Back on that list I had showed you earlier. Okay, and 
as we're going through this today, if you're in your own account and want to start running some of these reports just to get an idea of what they're going to look like in your own account, that would be a great idea. Or if at any point during the session you need me to go back to one, just put in a message in the question box and I'll be glad to go back to any of these. All right. This is another good one. One of our trainers, Ryan, this is one of his favorites, 1634, training hours and points per personnel for date range. So key takeaway on this one is that track hours and or points must be enabled in payroll. So I need to show you, this is a good time to show you the importance of this right here. And we, I just did a training video that'll be posted soon to our knowledge base site that kind of runs you through this. So if you have not yet discovered this part of integrating payroll with training, and it's okay if you don't use payroll module for anything else, but under settings, you will want to check this box, enable hourly payroll for training. This allows you much more flexibility in managing the hours per student for classes in the training module. So if you haven't checked, and if everything else is unchecked, that's fine. Just be sure to check this box. I'll show you why here momentarily. This is in payroll, under settings, enable hourly payroll for training. All right, let's go back to our training class. So here for 2015, you'll notice because we are tracking hours, but we aren't tracking points. That's okay, the column's blank. If you need to get rid of it, you can take it out to Excel and actually remove that column. But this tells me that our personnel, demo account person, for this class, under the class category administration, the name of the class was two hours, it was two hours long, and he got two hours for it. Now, I can adjust that participation. So if he only was able to attend or she was able to attend one hour, it would show two hours duration here, and then that person got one hour. And so this report, again, must you must have um, you must have the uh, payroll enabled for training. I'm gonna to go to another year here because I want to show you the other feature of this report, which is kind of cool. So as I pull 2014 out, I've got multiple people here. Okay, we'll scroll through it. And let's see, I've got just John actually, the, the way this is set up. But when I download to Excel, I want to show you something here as I open up Excel. Give me just a second as it opens. What's really neat is that let me make this bigger. Not too many of our reports do this, and I actually just learned this myself. I've got multiple tabs down here. What? Yep, I can go by person. So my main report gives me everybody as I scroll through, and then I've got Ed Alvord, and again, I know it's super small. So I can run a report for multiple people, but then when I take it to Excel, I've got individual sheets per, per person. So you can see it keeps going here for quite a few sheets. So that's something new I hope you learned, because I sure learned it new. Not too many of our reports do this. Um, so that's report number 1634. Um, it's ideal for viewing individual training hours um, by points and by hours if needed. Good, I got a question here from Rhett. Give me just a second to pull it out, Rhett. I'll try and answer it for you right now. So is there a report that would allow me to select one person or multiple and show a summary total of all hours by category? That's coming up. Yep, I think, we, I think we've got that one for you, Rhett. Um, if it isn't, let me know, and I'll find, I know we have one, but let me, uh, let me run through the next, because it may be, it may well be the next report here. 1503, classes completed by personnel. This report is so simply named compared to some of our other reports, but it's one of the best reports. When I see lots of parameters here and pick lists, life is good. So Rhett's asking, can I select one or more people and show a summary of all hours by category. So in this case, I'm going to pick I'm going to pick all categories, all training codes for the year. 
and run this. And again, I picked all class categories, but again, there it is listed there. So I can see John Adams is a good one. These are the class categories. So if I ran it by just a person, I've got the class name and hours and of course the date here. The key thing, and, and, and Rhett, let me know, you can type in if this is a good report for you or not, and if not, we can try and explore another one. Um, but this report uh, is really good because it gives you uh, the, the parameters to uh, do really, really granular reporting here. Even if I wanted to go class category and just a particular training code, I could do that. The other thing to keep in mind, and this is important for this particular report, if a student's hours were adjusted because, the, okay, uh, Rhett wants, okay, I see, Rhett wants to be able to get the total hours in the categories. Yeah, let me try and find uh, one that will summarize it at the higher level there. The, the key takeaway on this report, everybody, is that if you are turned on the ability to track hours by payroll and you have set here in the training module settings, this report needs to be updated because if I have selected track hours by training code by individual, and each individual may have different hours. So for example, John and Tim could have attended the same class, but Tim had to leave early. It will still show eight hours for Tim and eight hours for John. So if you're doing that, this report will need to be is in, well, it needs to be updated to reflect that. And that's why we have a couple other reports I'm going to show you before we wrap up that will reflect the uh, any adjustments made per student to the actual class, okay? But this is a uh, this is a very good report to get you the overarching numbers for each individual within the class. The only only downside, like I said, is that ability to not break it down um, to uh, sub hours in the event that somebody has more or less per class. But I will show you some of our other reports that do actually do that. So I think 1504 is going to be the one we're going to be looking at, Rhett. So um, here on code hours, summary per training code for date range. Um, this one is ideal for raw summary of code of hours per training code. So here, this is just per training code. Again, I have a pick list where I can group multiple training codes. In this case, we're going to go with all. But what this does is it gives me... This doesn't give me per person, so this is not what Rhett's looking for, but it does give me the total number of hours for each training code I've selected here on the pick list. So if I want to see how many hours we've spent on a particular training code, in this case, down here, accident prevention, I've got five and a half hours spent this year. Count of classes by personnel by class category. Okay, so this one... I think is what Rhett's going to be looking for. I'm going to go with year. I could pick one or more people. I have a pick list here for one or more people. Again, I can go with pass and fail, passed only, failed only. And again, for simplicity's sake and to get more data, we're going to go with all personnel for 2015. And here's your class count. So I think, Rhett, this hits it on the mark for you. Like I said, I've got to go through these reports sometimes and go, okay, which one was that? that we'll give him what he's looking for. So what we've got is a class category, class count, and the total class hours. So these are your class categories. So John's a good one to look at. How many how many classes he attended and the total hours spent? Is, does that do it for you, Rhett? And this is a this is a good report. I like this one a lot. The other key thing on this report is if perfect. Okay, good. That will work. He says the other one that if you if you do choose all personnel and you happen to have non-agency personnel, because if you'll remember in the training module, if when you create add people to the class, there's an option to add non-agency personnel. So if I were to come to your department to take a class, I'm not a member of your department, you could add me in. Well, I would appear in this report if I've selected all personnel. So then you can get total hours to include um, non-agency personnel. It's a gee whiz feature, but it is something with this report that's pretty cool. So. Current certifications by personnel for personnel for date range. So again, the a mouthful, but 
It's ideal for checking current certifications, again, by granted date. So I'm going to run a report for 2015 for all multiple or single person. Run this report. And you can see these are all of the certifications that were granted in 2015 to these individuals. So if Chief says, well, what, what certificates have we granted in 2015? This is your report. Or if I want to see my, my, somebody on my crew comes to me and says, all right, I know I took, you know, took this class. I'm pretty sure I got the certificate. Can you, uh, can you check it? Was this year for sure? So you can run it for an individual person, and it's going to appear right here. And it's going to summarize in these columns, created, granted, effective, expires, um, and any notes that go along with that particular uh, certificate. Okay, good. We're doing good. 1661, another one of my favorites. Again, we've got a multi-picker for personnel, multi-picker for class status. Uh, class status is in that one column in the training grid. Right here. So if I want to see uh, hours of classes that are scheduled, just scheduled, I can run it. Com incomplete, complete. This report gives me that capability. So if I've got, I want to see how many hours am I scheduled for in the future, I can just click it by scheduled and, and filter out that status, or I can cluster status in a multi-picker. You probably discovered that our, any reports that have multi-pickers are usually really nice. It just gives you so much more flexibility in pulling the data that you need. So again, going with last year's report for all personnel and all statuses, you can see that in this case, John Adams, and it's broken down by class category. You can see by category, that's how it's going to be sorted. These are the classes he taught, the status of the class, how many hours, and then the title of the class. Again, this is I like this report a lot. Anytime I've got the class class name, it helps me too, because sometimes people remember more of what the class title was than, than necessarily the category it was associated with because they didn't build the class in the system. And only lock classes are included, so just keep that in mind. And again, if you were an older customer with Training 2.0, it will Training 2.0, there won't be any data associated with that in here. Percentage of classes passed or failed by personnel. A simple summary of classes passed or failed. We've got the multi-picker again for personnel, and we've got columns here that break it down. Pass, fail, and the percent passed. Again, a nice another summary. This time clustered by personnel. But the thing that this report includes, which if you don't scroll down, is this. The ability to have a green when they were the ones they passed, and then if they didn't pass, let's see if we've got one. There we go. You can see in red over here the one that they didn't pass, including the name of the class. And Another trick part of this report is that if I click the, the hyperlink, and it doesn't obviously look like a hyperlink, it looks just like their number, their name is underlined. But if you click that, I'll give it a second, it gives me just Steve Allen's rundown. So it will take it'll there's a sub sub report in there just for an individual. So I can run for a group, say I want to run for my crew, then I can go in and, and pick just uh, each one of my crew members and give them a customized report without having to hit the pick list here. Again, a little trick part of this report, and I learned something, every day I learned something new in our system. And so as we were going through this in preparation, I went, okay, well, thanks for showing me that, Bob. That's something new I, I learned today. So uh, hopefully I can, I want to pay it forward, and hopefully that you'll find that beneficial as well. I always need stuff our developers come up with uh, when they're creating the features in our system. 1628. Um, and guys, thanks for thanks for uh, hanging in there. This is a very linear kind of event today, but I think as we go through these, I want to expose you. It's like anything, you know, once you're exposed to it and kind of see how certain things work, hopefully down the road, it's like, oh, I remember that report from that virtual Thursday. Maybe that's going to work for us. And that's kind of my goal for today is to just introduce you to all of these reports. So maybe down the road, you'll go, oh, I remember that one. I think that's going to work for us because it can get confusing trying to manage all these reports. So 2015, again, pick list for personnel. This, if those of you using the uh, uh, payroll, you'll notice that incidents, training, 
and events are all listed here. Those are the three things that payroll tracks. This You do not have to be using payroll for this, but I just wanted to mention that to you because that is those are the three things that you can attach hours to uh, when using the payroll module. So here, I can see Ed went on three incidents, and that's 11.1 .1 out of all of our incidents. He attended eight training classes. That's 80% of the classes in the system for 2015. No events. And then we don't have any events anyway, so it'd be 0% of events. So it's a it gives you, you have a, you have a multi-picker for personnel. You've got a single picker for shifts. So if you wanted to just run it for a single shift, you could do that. Um, only reviewed classes, reviewed incidents are included. So they have to be green locked, both incidents and classes. And it indicates the number of class categories, not necessarily each class instance. So that's an important takeaway to know on this report. And it's a really good way to, um, it can be supplement other payroll reports, but it gives you a nice summary of a person's overall participation in your organization. And that's by glancing at the percentage column here. Again, you're not too worried about events. Take this out into Excel and remove these two columns. And you've got a nice report on percentage of incidents and percentage of training only. So we can make use, make use of uh, Excel in this case. Okay. Timing is just about perfect here. All right, 1679. So 1679 is summary ISO training hours per personnel per category for date range. I, I see why this is called ISO. If someone were to have created ISO categories instead of using a standard, but again, running this report by uh, again a pick list for personnel, years 2015. I'm going to create this report, and what this report I think is ideal for is just it's summarizing and again this is going to supplement what Rhett's looking for as well it gives you a breakdown of per person the number of hours per class category and so I can see John taking all our training into consideration for this year he's at 79.84 hours so I think Rhett this might even be a little bit better than the other one we looked at I know departments use it for ISO, but when you get down into the specifics for the ISO standards, uh, I don't find it as beneficial as the other report I had showed you, the uh, uh, 1640, was it? I'm trying to remember these numbers. Yeah, 1640, okay. All right, pressing on. So this report, 1681, training code hours for standard for personnel for date range. Again, another good one because of standards. Ah, love it. Okay. Pass fail all personnel, 2015. Again, looking at all standards. This one is, again, ideal for ISO, ideal for the tiers for the uh, Air Force. Again, we'll go to John Adams, code category. That's training code category. Training code, date completed code hours, but remember up here, I selected all standards, and it shows here. If I selected just a particular standard, say for example, company training, now I don't know if I have anything here, so we'll give it a shot. And if I do, I do. ISO comes and says, okay, how many hours you have total for company training, ISO 580B? Okay, I run it down, and this report doesn't give me a grand total of all hours. It just is totals for each individual. However, very easily rectified by pulling this out into Excel. And you've got basically in one click a nice summary report for ISO. So again, 1681 is another good one, 1681. All right, down to about 13 minutes. Sixteen sixty nine training codes not completed by code for code for date range. So again, I want to see who hasn't completed a certain training code for this month or this year. I can do that. I'm going with all people, and again well, for the year, and you'll see this report. And this shows me that instead of per person, this is sorted by code. So we have a training code called aircraft types, and these are all the people that have not completed a class associated with that training code.
and that's report 1669. Pretty simple, again, high level, high level report. 1650, one of my favorites, training codes taught by instructor. Glenn, again, all of our class categories, I'm gonna pull all of them, but we have a multi-picker here. We have a multi-picker for personnel. And we've got the ability to pick our year, time frame. And so this is another one of those reports. We've got some nice columns here. So you can see John has taught these codes this year and how many hours. But just like that other report, they can go in and click on John's name and just get his report. Hit back and I can go to the, uh, the master list of what I've picked here. So group them by shift, by station, by crew, and then you can drill down and get a particular person's report. And so if I were really in this department, I had some hours here. Ah, interesting. Or not. <laughs> oh, I bet it's because I, I went back. Let's run this report again. It may not have preserved the links when I went over into it. So let's see if Greg will pull up. Yep, we're good. And you'll see the, under, the uh, hyperlink underline goes away, knowing that I can't drill in any deeper. All right, Rhett, good. That's that report worked for him. Good, good, good. Like I said, I have to, when I'm teaching too, someone asks me, well, what report will work? Okay, I think it's this one. And then we'll click on a couple and go, that's it. You just kind of kind of have to see the format and then it, then, it, then it hits you. Okay, last report. Training hours for personnel for date range. And we've got it again, multi-picker for personnel. Our year. You can sort this report by date, class, category, or, or hours. We're going to go by date in this case. The key takeaway here, and this report jumps into the higher level of accuracy than the other report that I had mentioned earlier that did not, um, and that one, let me, I'm going to tell you that number. Um, it's a really great report, number 1503. But as it stands right now, until it's rewritten or a, a supplemental report is added, um, it does not parse the hours out correctly if you are using the ability to track by training code. So um, let me rephrase that. Yeah, track by individual by training code. And then you've also turned on um, enable hourly payroll or enable uh, hourly payroll for training. So this one does give you accurate hours. So in the event that John attends, Confined space one on, on February 9th, um, he had no hours. So he might have, he apparently left early, whereas someone else will show their correct hours listed here. And so this one is a very strong report that uh, you'll want to consider 1676. All right. Um, again, hourly payroll must be enabled. Um, hourly payroll for training must be enabled. Again, that's back in the training module. Um, this report will uh, accurately display those hours. Um, really, really like this report. It kind of corrects that issue. And, and the reason it corrects it, and you're probably wondering, well, why doesn't that other report do it? Shouldn't they have got that right at the beginning? Well, we did have it right at the beginning. It's just we didn't have that functionality in the training module when that report was released. So it worked great until we upgraded the module. So sometimes reports have to catch up to the new features in the system. And, and we're well aware of that. And we're, we're always uh, constantly working towards making sure that you don't have questionable data in any of your reports. So a couple things before we wrap up today. Uh, first of all, I hope you found the rundown of all of these reports beneficial to you. This will be this has been recorded and will be posted on our uh, webinar archives uh, website via support, knowledge base, webinars on demand. You'll see it posted here in about a week or so in case you need to review. Also, my question to you guys, and I'm more than willing to share this with you if you, you you'll think you'll find it beneficial is I have a job aid that I did as I prepared for today to kind of go through each report to know what it does and doesn't do. Uh, and it breaks it down. It's listed just like you saw over here. You know, top to bottom, it's not numerically sorted. It's sorted like this page appears. And it gives you kind of a rundown of what those reports give you. I'm going to be using this um, when I'm teaching now. 
um, to have a better idea. So I've got a breakdown of what the report is and kind of a highlighted section on what it's ideal for. So um, what we will do, if you're interested, I will just email, we'll get this emailed out to all of our all of you that participated today in the training session, and then you can use it as you see fit. But it does give you kind of a nice summary of uh, what each report will do for you without always having to click into it. And you'll still want to click into it to, to confirm everything, but at least you'll have something at a glance. All right, and the last thing what I want to show you before we close out for today is um, we have a brand new report coming that will be released um, on February 9th. It's class is not completed. This will be report number 1684. Kim and our, our uh, support team leader, she sent this to me today. So this report will be brand new, uh, being released on February 9th. It's 1684. It'll be added to the list. It shows classes not completed by personnel for class category for date range, so the broader category. So instead of going down into training code, now you can see, well, if we've had apparatus and equipment and classes and people have not completed it, it will now break it down by class category instead of training code. So look for that report to be released next week, next Tuesday. All right, and yes, Rhett, I will definitely send this. Everybody will get that sheet I just showed you, that little job aid to help you with understanding our training reports. So with that, um, we've got a few more minutes left. Uh, let's see, oh, what I'd like you to look at, uh, in the near, very near future, I've got a training video coming that will show you, especially newer customers, if you have not yet engaged fully in using the training module, it walks you through some of the core settings because this part here, can get a little confusing on what exactly it does when you're checking these boxes. So we put together an eight minute video that walks you through some of the combinations and what it does and doesn't do uh, for the training module. So that's gonna be posted here soon. You look for that on our knowledge base, uh, knowledge base site. And it wouldn't surprise me too if they put it in our, what we call our dispatch, which is our uh, monthly, I believe it's monthly, it might be quarterly, but our monthly um, newsletter that goes out to our, our customers. So hopefully that one will be in there and you guys can check it out. And so we want you to get the most out of this module because this is a fantastic, I mean, it's probably my favorite module, uh, that, and, that and occupancy. But getting it set up on the front end is always a challenge for everybody. And so uh, we want to put out as many articles and videos to help you set this up effectively. So then when you're starting to track your training and running these reports, you've got a beautiful platform to really manage your training and to satisfy all of the parties that need this data, both internally and externally. So. All right, with that, I'll hang, I'll hang tight for the next two or three minutes to see if anybody has any questions um, on any of these reports. But I want to thank all of you for joining me today. And we will be uh, back again in two weeks uh, with another virtual Thursday training session. Always look for the announcements, as I'm sure you all do right here on our in-system alerts right up here on top where you can register for the, uh, the latest virtual Thursdays. And we usually post those announcements the Monday prior, and we keep it live all the way through the event. All right. I'll, like I said, I'll stick around for a couple minutes. And if anybody uh, winds up having any questions, um, have a safe shift if you're on duty today. If you're not, have a good day off. And uh, thank you again for uh, being part of the emergency reporting family. Uh, Thomas, you're welcome. My pleasure. And you guys will have uh, you'll have that email here shortly with this uh, with that attachment. So uh, stand by for that sometime uh, within the next hour or so. That's this document I had talked to, was talking about. Oh, outstanding, Ryan. Good. Yeah, I'm glad you had this was a good class for you. And yeah, make use of that. Uh, make use of that job. I didn't. Also, anybody still on? If you discover something that I missed, that you're you're making use out of that report. Just shoot me an email, and I'll, I'll add it to this list. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close out the session. And again, thank you, uh, thank you, one and all. Appreciate you having uh, having you on board today.